Hey everybody, my name is Mike Montgomery from Modern Builds, and today I am excited to show you how to build this DIY leaf-shaped coffee table with a very neat mid-century modern inspired base. So let's get started. I'm gonna be building today's project out of some solid oak 1x4s and 1x8s, and I started by using my Craig Crosscut Station along with my circular saw to cut all of the blanks for my base and I made sure that all of these pieces were a little oversized because we'll be trimming them to their final lengths in the next step. And if you wanna build a project like this, make sure and check out the link in the description where we've got plans and a cut list. I used my low-tech angle guide to lay out all of the lines for each of my legs, and really there are only two important angles for each of them, where they meet at the middle and the angle where it meets the floor. This is one of the really great things about the Craig Crosscut Station, is you can set a precise angle and use the fins to get repeatable cuts with really high accuracy, just like a miter saw. Three of my legs are the exact same, but I do need to make one sexy long leg. The base is centered on the third mark of the tabletop, so the math here was pretty easy. Just make sure and refer to the plans if you're building this. I cut the long taper cut by hand on each of the legs. This is actually the least crucial cut of all of them. Of course, I wanted to follow the line and make a straight cut, but the two angles that we've already cut are the ones that's gonna determine whether or not the table is square and sits flat. This is just aesthetics. Next, I used my portable cross cut to create a blank that I'll be using to make the pieces for my base hub. This is where all the legs will connect, and it also has a couple of crucial angles the 30 degree angle where the legs meet and the 15 degree taper at the top. I cut all of my straight lines with the circular saw instead of my jigsaw. That way I knew I would get a really flat joining edge, but I did come back with my flush trim handsaw to cut away the wood in all of the corners. And if you wanted, you could use a jigsaw for this step. The big piece for the hub connects to the long leg in front and the back leg, and for the two side legs, the hub piece is basically cut in half and will pocket hole that in the center. You can see how everything will come together here. To join everything, I'll be using my Craig 720 Pro pocket hole jig throughout this project. Craig's new 720 Pro pocket hole jig is great because it automatically adjusts to whatever thickness material you're using. You just put your material into the jig and it automatically clamps it down tight. I applied glue anywhere I had two boards meeting and then I surface clamped them to the table. Then I screwed everything together, making sure nothing moved while I was working. I connected my two side legs to the smaller hub pieces, and after I did that successfully, I got my long leg, large hub piece, and the back leg all connected. And you can see that even though this base was a little longer than my work surface, I still was able to do everything easily. Fun fact about Craig is that you can get different species plugs depending on what species you're using. Now I got red oak plugs to match my wood and I made sure to match the grain orientation and the general color as best I could. Then I trimmed everything flush and gave my base pieces a quick sanding while everything was still accessible. And once they get sanded, you can see just how well those plugs blend away. And a flat file really came in handy for me, getting rid of some of the burn marks that was left behind from cutting, which is common with red oak. I pre-drilled a couple spots where I'm gonna recess screws and connect one of my side pieces through the face of the big hub piece, and the other will connect with pocket holes. And I just made sure that neither of those are gonna line up and hit each other. I made sure that this third leg was sitting really square and was perfectly centered in the hub. Then I screwed it in, making sure to add wood glue to the joint. And I used the same inch and a quarter fine thread pocket hole screws that I've used throughout. Like I mentioned, the fourth leg connects with pocket hole screws. So after I drilled a couple of pocket holes, I connected everything with glues and screws also. It's really cool to think that we've built this entire base using just a circular saw, a flush cut saw, and a pocket hole setup. Really awesome. It reminds me of that classic mid-century modern Jetsons atomic style. 
Oh, and don't forget the last couple of plugs. And now we can move on to making our solid oak leaf tabletop. On my computer, I made a 24 inch by 36 inch template that's the outline of a Monstera plant leaf and I got it printed at the UPS store. I'll make sure and leave a link to download it in the description below. I used my Craig portable cross cut and my circular saw to cut the pieces for my tabletop at 45 degrees. I wanted to make sure and keep track of these boards, that way the grain would meet in the middle and be continuous on the left and right side of the table. I think this 45 degree chevron pattern meeting at a point in the middle is gonna look really neat and I made sure to cut all of my pieces just a little bit oversized, that way I could trace the outline of the leaf and I'll eventually cut it out with my jigsaw. Once I knew everything would work, I flipped my boards upside down along with the template and I traced the outline on the bottom of what will be my table so that I can mark responsible locations for all of my pocket holes. I wanna make sure that I avoid drilling through screws whenever I cut out this outline. Each of these boards got three pocket holes and not all of them are inside of the cut path, but I'm gonna be using these screws to make sure all of my boards are square and tight while the glue dries. So even though they won't be in the finished table, it's still important that they're there. Using Craig's mobile project center, like earlier, worked great with these clamps. I was able to screw everything together and I just made sure to set each half to the side on a flat surface while the glue dried. Now I tried my best to get as straight of a center edge as possible, but I knew it wouldn't be perfect. So I came back with a straight edge and my circular saw to trim a perfectly straight line. That way when the two tabletop pieces meet, there's not gonna be a gap or any inconsistencies. So as you can see, things are going great. And my next step is to drill more pocket holes into the tabletop, this time to connect the two sides together. This time I tried to make sure that each of the one by eight pieces had two screws connecting one another together. I am really curious to see how wood movement affects this piece. I made sure to use glue and mechanical fasteners. That way everything really is tied together, but we've got a lot of grain going a lot of different directions. So it could be interesting. I centered the template with the seam in the tabletop and I traced the outline with a pencil. Then I got a clean cutting jigsaw blade and I used that to cut the outline. This part of the process was a ton of fun and I did my best to stay right on the line. A jigsaw is kind of classic for deflecting and not giving a perfectly straight edge. So I tried my best to get the bulk of the material out of the way. And then I came back and got all of the small intricate cuts that I needed to take care of. This gave me a really square outside edge and I just had to make sure that all of the small cutouts were nice and square as well. I sanded the edges first with 120 grit sandpaper and I worked my way up to 220 just like I did with the top and you'll see that in a second. The one tricky part about this project was hand sanding all of the cutouts. At first, I considered routing a round over on all of the corners and edges, but after consideration, I thought that since these were such tight spaces, I would rather just sand it smooth by hand. I gave everything a nice little round over and it looked great. And FYI, a half round file is really convenient in this application. Just like on the base, I tried my best to match the grain orientation and the color of the plugs with the boards that they were going into. I know that this is the bottom of the table and a lot of people don't really worry about it, but I figure if anyone's down there looking at the base, they're gonna see the bottom of the top. So I wanted to make sure it's gonna look fresh. I should admit that I messed up the location of a couple of my pocket hole screws and I had to cut through them with my jigsaw. I just switched out to a thin metal cutting blade and then once I was through the screw, switched back to the clean wood cutting blade. Now I sanded the bottom and the top of the table first with 80 grit to get everything flat and smooth and all of the glue lines taken care of. Then I came back with 150 grit and finally 220 to get a super smooth finish. And finally, I could attach the base to the tabletop. Once again, I used quite a bit of wood glue and some screws. I didn't use so much glue that I would make a mess, but I wanted a really strong joint here. And Craig's compact 90 degree driver really helped in this scenario, driving these screws in. I used recessed inch and a quarter fine head screws, just like everywhere else. 
And you know, at this point in the project, I was getting hype. Ta -da! Okay, so now we're gonna apply finish and we are done. I put on two coats of Maker Brand Simple Finish, which is a basic oil finish with wax included. This gives a little bit of a top coat protection and really enhances the grain. For this project, Danish oil, polyurethane, or wipe on poly would also be a great solution. Applying finish to a table really is one of my favorite steps because you finally get to see all of that sanding work come to fruition. And this project in particular had a lot of cool curves to really check out. Before everyone comments, this table's not strong. Well, we're about to test it. First, 25 pounds over here by the edge. I'm doing a real test. This isn't fake. But we're not done. Let's make it 50. Whoa! I'm not putting any more weight on, but I think we can all agree, this is not a flimsy tape. So there you have it. I really do hope you enjoyed this project. Here you can see the coffee table in my living room. I love it. The color is awesome, especially with this natural light coming in through this west window. I really love this project and I think it's the perfect blend of trendy and classic with that cool leaf table top and the mid-century modern base. The 45 degree grain orientation on the top really mimics nature and looks super fun. And big shout out to Oak Plugs. You can hardly even tell that I used pocket holes where they're visible. Such a fun project. So thanks again for watching. And like I mentioned, follow the link down below if you're interested in planes and the template for this coffee table. Also, you can find me at Modern Builds. I'll leave a link to my YouTube channel down below. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye everybody. Ugh!